Hi there. Bubble has introduced a new pricing model that improves app performance and flexibility. So in this video, I'm going to cover the old model, the new model and compare the pros and cons of the old way and the pros and cons of the new way. One thing to note, there's no need to panic. There's a very long 18 month grace window where you can just stick to the old pricing plan and ignore everything happening. However, the new model does improve app performance and flexibility. So there could be some significant advantages here as well. So let's dive in. To better understand the change, I'm going to use an analogy here. We're going to use water to represent bubble resources. Anything the app does, API call, database operation, workflow, anything, water is utilized. Now in the previous capacity waste model, uh, we had an unlimited water supply, but your app was connected using a thin pipe, depending on which plan you were on. If you're on the personal plan, you get a thin pipe. If you needed more water immediately for a traffic spike, or you've got more users simultaneously, you had to upgrade to a bigger capacity plan or purchase more units of capacity. Uh, however, this model has its limitations. Over time, you had unlimited water over the whole month, but if you had a thousand users come to your platform, the pipe would limit throttle the resources allocated to your app. So we'd get the familiar, oh, timed out, operation timed out, bubble is slow or something. Uh, however, in the new model, you don't get an unlimited supply of water. You get a limited bucket of water based on your plan. Use those resources preciously over the course of a month. Uh, however, there's no throttling on speed. All apps are connected with a big fat pipe. You can burn through the bucket immediately or optimize your app and use water slowly over time. Uh, you can purchase additional buckets at a discount. There are tiered charges. Uh, there are overage charges as well, which you can switch off if, if cost is a hard limit. Uh, better in a sense that you're not being wasteful of bubble resources uh, during your app's use. Uh, the app's use is linked with bubble use. Uh, and the speed part, that's the big thing, no throttling. So I'm really looking forward to how that's going to impact. Uh, just to list some pros and cons, the old capacity model was a bit simpler, straightforward metric and had predictable costs. However, there was throttled performance, especially on the personal plan, which gave the feeling that bubble apps are slow. There was definitely inefficiency, uh, lots of wa water wastage or resource wastage happening. Uh, scalability could be challenging as you could get a traffic spike. Uh, the app would be throttled and users would be timed out or facing slow speeds. Uh, in contrast, the workload based model should result in improved app performance. I'm going to run some tests when I can to double check. So do subscribe to this channel to stay tuned to updates. Uh, the, the pricing seems a bit fairer in a sense that cost is linked to the amount of work a bubble app does. Previously it was like, oh, unlimited water, just go for it. Uh, however, now it's like, okay, whatever we do that it's one-to-one -one linked and it's, it should be a bit more easier to scale. If a thousand users arrive on the app, they should feel the same user experience and speed without th the throttling. It will have a bit of a cost though. Uh, there are lots of flexible tiers and buckets which can be purchased to augment the base capacity. Base capacity. Uh, this model definitely encourages developers like us. We build apps for clients around the world to optimize their apps which should result in lower cost, but also faster performance, which benefits end users again. Uh, on the downside, there is definitely a potential for increased costs. The model can be a bit complicated to understand and predict pricing. Uh, we definitely need more monitoring and optimization. Uh, I'm going to be running some experiments and try and share whatever I can soon. Uh, a traffic spike can result in a large bill as well. So there is a bit of an uncertainty in estimating workload. Uh, overall, while capacity-based pricing model offered some simplicity and predictable costs, it had some drawbacks in terms of performance, especially uh, scalability, resource utilization, and wastage. Uh, the new workload pricing addresses many of these issues, but introduces some complexity around monitoring it, making sure the app's optimized, and making sure it's all uh, just, uh, there's no unexpected builds here happening here. All right. So we have taken a look at the logs for our client projects. Some are in the 10, 15 million plus workload unit range. So we're going to dig deep into how to optimize apps for workload unit use. Uh, I'll try and share whatever I find on this channel. So do subscribe, follow and on Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever you find this. Uh, if you have questions, add a comment below. I'll try and reply as best I can. And if you need an extra pair of hands to look at optimizing your app in whatever way, feel free to reach out using the contact link below. Thanks. Bye.